Toxic Release and Gas Dispersion Model. Okay, video 2. In this video, you will learn about what is the variety of parameters that will affect the atmospheric dispersion of toxic material. Okay, the first aspect we will look further is what is the uh, uh, what is the relationship between wind speed and the effect to atmospheric dispersion. Okay, the first one is the wind speed. The second one is the atmospheric stability. The third one is the ground condition, whether there is a buildings, water, and trees. Then the fourth one is the height of the release above ground level. Okay, what we call as HR. Okay, height of release above the ground level. And then the fifth one is the momentum and the buoyancy of the initial material release. Okay. This aspect, momentum and buoyancy of the initial uh, material release, will contribute to the equation of the gas dispersion okay basically what have been contributed by the momentum and buoyancy we will further affect the dispersion okay we will look further after this so the first uh, factor or the first parameters that we will look is the wind speed okay because wind speed will contribute or will affect the direction of the continuous release okay for example for this plum model okay how wind speed will affect this continuous plum model okay then the second one is the atmospheric stability whether it is unstable neutral or stable okay you need to determine whether the atmospheric at that time is is it unstable is it stable or is it neutral Okay, because these stability classes will determine what type of coefficient that you will use in your gas dispersion. Okay, so you can see at the air temperature as a function of altitude for, for day and night condition. Okay, this is a night condition and this is day condition. So based on the temperature, based on the height of the release will uh, of the situation will determine what is their temperature okay this is the atmospheric stability okay is it unstable neutral unstable okay you will use these classes to determine what type of coefficient all right so clear then we look for the third one is the ground condition okay for the ground condition usually okay we show the change in wind speed versus height for a variety of surface condition so for urban situation or for urban uh, location, okay, for urban location, usually you have a lot of tall building. Okay, this building usually will disturb the flow or the path of your continuous release, okay, or your gas dispersion. So this building and uh, high rise uh, construction actually will determine where your this gas uh, where where your gas dispersion will end up okay as compared to suburb uh, suburbs where you have um, just a tree a small tree then a small building and so on then your uh, we can con uh, we can consider also a flat surface okay a flat surface usually uh, around a lake or uh an ocean okay so basically this is the ground condition parameters okay. then the fourth one is the height of release hr okay from uh, above ground level for any release okay so this is your hr okay the height of the release okay because this is the point of your release in your continuous release all right after height of release of the ground level HR, then we will look into what is the momentum and buoyancy parameters. Okay, this momentum and buoyancy parameters will determine or will uh, affect your plum characteristic. Okay, how you are, you, you can see how the dominance of the internal buoyancy and also during the turbulence will determine the path and the direction of your dispersion. 
Okay, this is a uh, during your gas dispersion, and then okay, we have uh, the first one is the naturally buoyant dispersion model. Okay, so this uh, dispersion model to estimate the concentration downwind of a release. Okay, so there are two types of dispersion model. Remember, there is a plum model and also puff model. Okay, so the puff model can be used to describe a plum. Okay, where is a plum is simply the release of continuous puff, just like the figure or the uh, figure that I have shown you in previous video, where a plum is actually a release of continuous puff. All right. So a plum model is recommended when all steady state plum information required. Okay, because it basically is very easy to use a plum model. Whereas a puff model is recommended when the studies involving a dynamic plums. Okay, example the effect of a plum of a, on a plum of a change in wind direction. Okay, so in other words, plum model uh, or puff model can be utilized or can be applied based on your situation and your condition. So before we can develop our dispersion model, okay, we need to understand what is their coordinate system. Okay, this uh, dispersion model we utilize the Gaussian dispersion model. Okay, so the coordinate system actually will based on this uh, information. Okay, for example, the stack gas transported downstream. Okay, we just highlight a downstream process here. So the downstream uh, direction, dispersion in vertical direction governed by atmospheric stability. So atmospheric stability will affect only a vertical direction. Okay, then the dispersion in horizontal plane governed by molecular and eddy diffusion, meaning that only the eddy diffusion will affect the horizontal plane of the direction uh, in gas dispersion. Okay. So X axis oriented to a wind direction, Z axis oriented in vertically outwards, Y Y direction oriented transverse to the wind. Okay, we will look further in the figure. What is Z, uh, X, Y, and Z axis? Okay, so the concentration are symmetric. Okay, this is the assumption that we make during uh, when we apply this Gaussian dispersion model. Concentration are symmetric about Y axis and Z axis. We look what we call uh, when we call as x exists, y exists, and z exists. So z exists is the elevation or vertically upwards. Okay, while x exists is oriented to wind direction, just a forward. So this is the wind direction. Okay, so the wind direction uh, x exists is governed by. Is either atmospheric stability or molecular and eddy diffusion. So y direction oriented transverse to the wind. Okay, transverse to the wind. This is y direction. Okay, and the assumption uh, have to uh, is uh, has to be made is there is a symmetry. Okay, a, a symmetrical direction. Okay, so this. Uh, duration of wind we call as a pollutant concentration profiles. Okay, this is the concentration profile. So as you can see, this is the coordinate of the gas. Uh, it's either x zero zero, x negative y zero, x negative y z, and so on. Okay, because this is in the negative y region, this is positive y region, but most uh, coordinate that. Uh, important that you know where is your x and where is your z. Okay, x and z will determine the location of your gas dispersion. Okay, y axis is in trans uh, transverse of wind, then x axis in direction of wind, while z axis is through the stack or the elevation or your height uh, height of release. Okay, height of release 
Okay, then we will look what is the behavior. Okay, this is the behavior of the downwind elevated transverse concentration profile. Okay, from as you can see, the elevation is going down, but the spread of the direction or a gas dispersion is increasing. Okay, towards the direction of the wind. Okay, so this is the profile. Okay, the behavior or the profile for the release. Okay, concentration profile as a function of distance downwards. Okay, as a function of distance downwards. You are going further of your distance, okay, for your gas dispersion, you will look that your Z is reduced, okay, it's, a dec uh, it's decreasing, but your Y is increasing, it's either in positive or negative, okay, remember, because they are symmetrical. So, as a distance increase, so does the dispersion, okay, dispersion also increase. Then we will look what is a neutral, neutrally buoyant dispersion model. Okay. This is the main equation, what we call as aviation equation. Okay, you can read what is the definition and what's the aviation equation. It's about okay. This is a, the coordinate system is fixed as one. Okay, then we have our stochastic quantity. Okay. Because uh, it based on the coordinate direction x, y, and z. Okay. Then this is the concentration. Okay, we will look at the final equation. Okay, you have the concentration equation. Then comes the, your eddy diffusivity. Okay, we call it a kj. Okay, with units of area over time. Okay, so this is your eddy diffusivity remember eddy diffusivity, uh, diffusivity uh, effect on our uh, dispersion model okay then finally it become equation 9 okay this is delta c over delta t plus u times delta c over delta x equal to delta K C over X. So this equation 9 together with appropriate boundary and initial condition forms the fundamental basis for dispersion modeling. Okay, so this is the first equation for your dispersion modeling. Okay, this basic equation actually will, will be solved for a variety of cases. Okay, in the next video, I will show you what is their cases. There are 15 cases of gas dispersion. Okay, we will look what is their uh, equation from this basic equation.